Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So we have started uh, the Z transform in the last class. However, we have discussed on a Laplace transform mostly uh, because as as we have already learned about uh, about the the process, uh, how to check the stability in case of continuous time signal, and uh, in that case, Laplace transform is the tools. Similarly, we have a Z transform in case of a discrete time signal, uh, which is a effective tool uh, for checking the stability, as well as for the filter design and analyzing the system itself. <clears throat> so in my understanding, Z transform is a very important uh, topic uh, for DSP, and you will find it in the probably from the Proteus book, chapter number three. So please start reading of uh, that chapter for understanding Z transform. Uh, okay, let's start with the definition. So if we have any signal Xn, we want to do the Z transform, <coughs> the expression is, like this, uh, xn, z to the power minus n, and this n is from minus infinity to plus infinity, it will convert it to the z domain. What does it mean graphically and each and every part? We will discuss uh, one after another. When this g is represented as r e to the power j omega, where r is a constant, number <clears throat> or this is a number it can be fractional or integer any 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 number is from a zero to infinity so if we place the value of z there so we can find the definition as xn r e to the power j omega whole to the power uh, minus n so g is equals to r e to the power j omega so what we have done here, if we look at uh, the Fourier transform, if we talk about the Fourier term, so x omega, what we have done there, we have done the, exactly the same thing. Let's say n is equals to minus infinity plus infinity, x n, and then e to the power minus j omega n. And here you have found the same thing for the z transform which is n is equals to from minus infinity to plus infinity, whole range of your input, then multiplied with r to the power minus n, and then afterwards e to the power minus j omega n. So we are introducing a new factor, r to the power minus n. Like in uh, Laplace transform, we have introduced e to the power minus s, where s is equals to sigma plus j omega. The same thing, e to the power minus ast. So where we have introduced the sigma is a, a real number. <clears throat> Here we have also introduced a real number r and r to the power minus n. Now, if, you, if we think in a way that this is our input, xn r to the power minus n is our input, then it is just like the Fourier transform. So we can say in a way for r is equals to one, if that is so, then we have, what is the value? If r is equals to one, we, we have the magnitude uh, for this one is equals to again one for any, any value. So it will belongs to one and it is also a Fourier transform. So we can say that the Z transform is a special version of the Fourier transform. So I have, I have discussed uh, these things in the, in the later part, uh, as I have uh, told here. Okay, so from the definition, this is the definition where R Z is equals to this. What is the, there is two terms here we have found one is the magnitude, which is R, 
why we have uh, given the modulus i will discuss it in the in the future future slides and the phase is equals to definitely this is the phase of this z value i have mentioned this part if we took this is our input if you do the fourier transform of that one you will get the z transform so this we, we have done the fourier transform now we have done the fourier transform of xm r to the power minus n where you can choose the value of r by choosing the value of r you can understand the stability of the system okay we'll give the example so this is described here now if x n up to the power n so think think that this is your new signal is summable or square summable then it will converge and in that case we can say that if x n r to the power minus n does not exist or converge anywhere in the z plane then we we can say that the z transform does not exist similar to the fourier transform if x n n is from minus infinity to plus infinity if it is summable then we can say that okay we have fourier transform or a square summable or there are some special case for this one if x n r to the power minus n so do have the the convergence that means summability or a square summability then we can say that again yes you have the fourier transform and that means you have the z transform because the z transform is nothing but the the fourier transform of this term now the question is for which value of r that is the question and there is a term is called roc that is region region of convergence so for a particular value of r it is not true for a spectrum of r for which value of r this is summable this is this is summable is known as the region of convergence will 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 uh, give the example so let me let me let me clear uh, this aspect <clears throat> with an example let's say we have an xn and the xn looks like this as as follows this is an of course an hypothetical example let's take it like this so it is actually in increasing with time so here this is n and it will increasing with respect to time and it goes to infinity now what do you believe uh, do you have the fourier transform of this xn the answer is no because this is not summable let's say it is not even a square summable so take it like this it is definitely this is a unstable situation so now the question is how much uh, the system is unstable so how to control the system so first of all we need to check that whether the system is stable or unstable so if you can do the fourier transform you can you can do the fourier transform because this is an unstable system now there would be some tools by which you can justify okay the system is unstable and this much unstable the situation okay so now what we can do we are taking another signal which is r the series of r so you can write in a way that okay uh, the signals r to the power n so r to the power minus n whatever the case so r to the power minus n equals to 1 divided by r to the power n in a such a way that the combination of these two that means xn and r to the power minus n or in a sense xn divided by r to the power n 
you will choose the value of r to the power n in a such a way that this component and the summation of that from n is equals to from minus infinity to plus infinity, that means whole spectrum, whole spectrum will be the summation is less than it will converge. It will converge means that will be summable. So what we can find here, let's say xn is a very huge number when we are proceeding from n is equals to from minus infinity to plus infinity, and it is growing. So it is unstable. It is not summable. Now we are introducing uh, some value here, r to the power n, and choosing the value of r to the power n for which the system will be stable. More clearly, let's take xn is equals to 2 to the power n. If that is so, if we think about this, n is equals to from minus infinity to plus infinity and 2 to the power n. Of course, this is not summable. It will grow with, the, with, with time, with, with the scale of n. Now, what we can do, we can choose a value 2 to the power n divided by r to the power n. And if this whole component, that means 2 divided by r to the power n, if this component is less than 1, so that means 2 divided by r, if that is less than 1, or we can say that if r is greater than 2, if you choose any value, and that will be summable. For example, if I choose r is equals to 3, what will happen? We have 2 to the power n divided by 3 to the power n. And if you go for the summation from n is equals to from minus infinity to plus infinity, of course, this is now 2 by 3 whole to the power n. n is equals to from minus infinity to plus infinity. That will converge. That means this is summable function now. Now, what is the advantage of this procedure? By, by knowing the fact of this value r, what should, be the, what should be the range of r for which the system will be stable? That is, r is equals to more than equals to, let's say even, even equals to, more than equals to 2. Or it, it should be very, very specific. Uh, r, is, r should be greater than 2. By, by knowing this fact, the value of R, we can understand how much instability you have uh, in the system. If you need, let's say, if you need R should be greater than 10 for a system, for, and in another system, you need R2 is greater than 2. So, so from, from these two numbers, we can understand that the system number one is more unstable unstable than the system number two. That should be very, very uh, true. Because in this case, the R need higher value to stable the system. For example, if you have like 10 to the power N, your Xn is, is a function like 10 to the power N, definitely you need 10 to the power N divided by, let's say 10.5 is also fine, 10 to the power to the power n to, to normalize the situation. And this is the, this is the impact of the r in the equation. Let me write the equation again uh, by definition, xn r to the power r to the power minus n and e to the power minus j omega n. We need to understand each and every point of, of this. You can draw it, definitely you can draw it. This is an x uh, exponent, uh, this is a uh, decaying or increasing function with respect to time, with the respect to time. Now you need to choose the value of R by which you can make this part stable. For what? For the value from N is equals to from minus infinity to plus infinity. That is, that is the task. <coughs> so that is the core objective of, of the Z transform. How, how can we 
represent the z z plane okay so uh, now i would like to show the z plane representation try to understand each and every point of this of course we have two axes one is real axis and another one is the imaginary axis however this presentation is a bit different than the laplace transform in this case we have put in a circle let's start with this uh, what does it mean by each and every point if we have the real and we have the imaginary part this point represent this uh, particular uh, point definitely represents two two things one is the value of r and what is the value of omega because as you, as you can understand that the xz that means the z transform z transform of xn this is a function this is a function of both r and omega r represents the value and omega represent the phase of the signal so what does it mean by this point at this point let's say the r the amplitude is one let's say r is one so this is one and what is the value of omega it start with zero that what does it mean by that point similar to that if we target at this point again you will find that the value of r is still one because we are rotating in a circular fashion so the value of r is one and the value of omega is equals to pi divided by two if we proceed more to this direction of course you can understand this point is again what is the value of r the value of r is the length okay so the value of r is the length here the value of r is again one and what is the value of omega the value of omega is equals to pi here the value of omega is equals to okay thrice pi by two and here again when we have rotated that so this is again zero means twice pi and for all through the circle the value of r is equal so this is called unit circle representation so this is the unit circle so unit means r is equals to one why this is important this unit circle as we have already mentioned that in the fourier transform or sorry in the z transform if we put the value of z is equals to one that is equals to r r is equals to one in that case this is equals to what x omega the fourier transform exactly like this so the z transform in the z transform in the z transform plane if this solved this can be solved for the value of r is equals to one then it is it can be also solved in the fourier transform what i meant by this statement let's say for r is greater than 0 0.5 you have the you have the z transform you have you can do the z transform what does it mean for the r is equals to one do you have the z transform the answer is yes you have the z transform that means that if for r is equals to one you have the z transform you also have the fourier transform of that sequence of that sequence means your xn xn is an arbitrary value uh, i would like to make more clear on this statement let's say this is your unit circle i believe that you understand what does it mean by the unit circle where you have the r is equals to one and omega is from zero to twice pi the range of omega is equals to is from zero to twice pi in the fourier domain 
in the Fourier domain, or uh, Fourier transform, we can say the omega, the value of omega, this is omega, is from zero to, let's say, twice pi. Where the pi, mostly, we concentrate on from zero to pi, that means from, this is from zero to pi. This is, sorry, this is uh, pi by two, and this is pi. So we need to know about uh, this half circle to understand the pattern of the filter. However, if we have enough information from pi to twice pi, that is the repetition from zero to pi. Okay, let's take, I have given the example, if R is greater than 0 0.5, that is, a, that also give the solution. What does it mean? If I put a circle where this amplitude is equals to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, then more than 0 0.5 is the solution. More than 0 0.5 is the solution. What does it mean? More than 0 0.5 from infinity, all are the solution. So this is the solution plane. Inside the solution plane, do you have R is equals to one? Do you have that? The answer is yes, we have that. And that shows that these Xn also have the Fourier transform. On the other hand, if we have this kind of scenario where this is the unit circle, let's say this is the unit circle, unit circle, and the solution is for R is more than 1.5. That is the solution plane. Solution plane means R is more than 1.5 for that we have the Z transform of our arbitrary input Xn. Now, what is the solution plane? If we want to draw the 1.5 plane, this is of course what, this is one, and let's say 1.5 is there. So we, we can draw a unit circle like this, uh, sorry, 1.5 circle. So this amplitude is 1.5. What is the solution plane? The solution plane is more than more than 1.5. More than 1.5. That is the solution plane. More than 1.5. This shows that these Xn do not have the Fourier transform because the R equals to one is not the solution for this kind of. Uh, the, uh, for uh, for uh, this kind of z plane, so uh, if r is equals to one is a solution in any way that shows that x n must have the Fourier transform as well. Of course, it has the Fourier uh, z transform. Otherwise, how you can plot the z plane representation? If we want to compare with the z z uh, z z transform to the Fourier transform, whether you have the Fourier transform or not, how you can check it from the Z transform, you need to check the unit circle. If the unit circle is a solution inside the solution plane, you have the Fourier transform. Otherwise, you don't have the Fourier transform. Okay. So uh, I believe uh, that part is uh, clear to you. So whenever we are we are writing writing like this x z, what does it mean? It actually x is a function of both r and omega that we are uh, representing. For a particular value of r, let's say r is equals to two, we are we have the value of omega, and we need to we need to check it for all the value of omega. So if we write the definition, so this is the definitions we start with, n is equals to from minus infinity plus infinity, xn, what is xn? Any input, then r to the power minus n, we understand how to choose the value of r to the power minus n. We need to choose the value of r to the power minus in such a way so that this part will be summable. That is the logic, that's it this part should be summable and multiplied with e to the power minus j omega 
n as Fourier transform. Okay. So of course the x omega x z that means z transform is a function of r and omega. Now let's say let's say in somehow you understand that for r is equals to two you want to try it. You want to try it for r equals to two, and you, you found that okay x n r to the power. So what is the value of r? It is two. Two to the power uh, minus n. Of course n is from minus infinity plus infinity e to the power minus j omega n. Try to visualize the thing. What you are doing? We are doing, let's say, we have our xn. Let's say this is our xn, any arbitrary signal. Let's say make it like this. Uh, let's say make it like this, okay? Make it a bit unstable. Let's say this is our xn, and somehow all our hypothetical data don't relate with the practical one. Let's say this is, this is our R profile, where the R profile is a is decaying factor. So let's say this is this is the plot for one divided by R to the power n. This is the plot of that. This is in the time scale. If you multiply these two, then we, you will find a stable or unstable signal. Could you please answer? If we multiply Xn with one divided by R to the power N, are you going to get a stable signal or unstable signal? Any of you? No answer. Stable or unstable signal? Yes, 138. Let me ask 35 from 16 batch. You are not audible. Okay. Okay, zero nine. Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Is that is that stable or unstable if we multiply <coughs> x n with one divided by r to the power n, the signal? Um, sir, maybe unstable. Maybe unstable. Thirteen. Uh, sir. I am not sure about the answer. Okay. Okay, it should be stable, isn't it? It it looks like it, the the second one is decaying when you are multiplying these two facts. Let's say this is one. If this is one and they are less than one, when you are multiplying each and every portion, because this is a discrete one. Of course, you need to discretize because this is x n and this is r to the power n they will multiply each and every point and at the end of the day uh, let's say this is the final signal i have a, a less area that's why i'm just writing only the upper half of the signal uh, the ultimate uh, result could be like this one multiplied with whatever the value uh, was there let's say that was also one so it will start with one and now multiply each and every point and then you will find that, of course, it will uh, be like that, okay, something like that. So it will goes, it will uh, goes like this, okay. So now it is, of course, this is a uh, discrete time signal. So this is what your x n r to the power minus n. Now, whenever you, this is this is your new signal which you will do, you will perform the Fourier transform e to the power minus j omega n. And I believe that what does it mean e to the power minus j omega n? Now you are just relating, relating your unknown signal. This is your unknown signal with your known frequencies. 
what are the frequencies you should try what are the frequencies you should try you should try all possible frequencies and that's why all possible frequency means from omega equals to zero to omega equals to omega equals to pi for all the possible frequencies and you have you have definitely get a different uh, different values of course you are getting different values uh, in the in the z plane What does it mean? Since this signal, this signal is not a pure sine wave of a particular frequency, that's why we can expect that there would be a lot of frequency components there. Somewhere else, it gives a higher value and somewhere else it gives a lower value. Where in some place it gives a very high value and somewhere else it will give a lower value. If I ask you this question, uh, if you understood up to this, up to this means you have uh, Xn unstable signal. You have put one divided by R to the power in, in such a way so that the signal uh, uh, converted to the stable one. And now you are doing the Fourier transform. That actually means the Z transform. First, you stable the signal, and then you are doing the Fourier transform. That is actually the Z transformation. In that case, do you expect the same outcome? Do you expect the same outcome? Let's say X, Z, it can be represented as X, R, and omega, of course. And now, let's say R is equals to 2, and that is fixed. So omega is different. So if I took omega equals to zero, let's say R to omega equals to zero, or omega is equals to pi by two, or I took X to omega is equals to pi. Are, are all those numbers, number uh, I'm talking about X to zero, X to pi by two, X to pi. Do you believe that all will get the same value or different value? I'm asking to the, uh, to the class. Will you expect the same value for all the cases? For all three cases, you are expecting same value or different value? So different value? Of course, different value. Thank you for your answer. Because what you are doing, you are, you, you are fixing the value of R by which you are having this, this input. This is the input signal. And now you are doing the Fourier transform. Definitely when you have done the Fourier transform, what we have found in the Fourier domain, if this is the omega and this is the zero, from zero to let's say pi, we have a different spectrum. We got different spectrum. So of course, from this point to this point, to this point, all through this line, if I, if I think of the, this is the, not the unit circle, this is the value is two. Let's say the value is here two because I'm, I have, we have changed the value of R is equals to two. For omega equals to zero, what should be the value? For omega is equals to pi by two, what should be the value? And omega is equals to pi, what should be the value? What should be the value? There would be some Z axis by which you can understand, there would be the Z axis by which you can understand what would be the value. In some places, you, in some places, it might happen that if you are fortunate, in some places you got some pole, in some places you, you may got zeros. What does it mean? I, 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 I am very confident that you understand about the physical uh, instance of zeros and the poles. Zeros means you have no value there. That means uh, you, you don't got any similarities over there. And if you got a pole, somewhere else, you, you, you found that it got a huge similarity. 
similarity like this. For example, if I if I want to if I want to uh, let's say I'm putting a zero over there for for uh, for make the point more uh, understandable, and uh, let me let me choose a zero here here as well. Okay, where are the zeros at the location of omega equals to omega equals to zero and omega equals to pi. Now, what I am trying to do this this the bending part, I will stress it and make it straight line. Okay, so this is the value of omega equals to zero. This is a value omega is equals to pi by two, and this is omega is equals to pi. So try to understand. So I'm concentrating on omega equals to zero. At omega equals to zero, the value is zero. That means you will get zero here. At omega equals to, let's say, what is the value? This is uh, uh, more than pi by two, more more than pi by two. So let's say, let's say, uh, what I can say, mm, it is seven seven point five. This is let's say seven point five. Uh, sorry, uh, 0 point seven five. Zero point seven five pi. So where is this location? Let's say th this is that location, 0 0.75 pi. At that location, you have pole. Pole means maximum similarity, maximum similarity. Let's say this is the maximum similarity. We are now at that point. And now if we are this point at omega equals to pi, what is the similarity? Similarity between what? Again, similarity between x n r to the power minus n. The similarity between this and e to the power minus j omega. Omega means what? Omega is equals to pi and n. We are looking at the value value where omega is equals to pi. We 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 are just checking. We are checking for different value of omega. So at the location of omega equals to pi, what is the similarity? The similarity is again zero. So we can we may find this kind of spectrum for for this kind of z plane representation. Okay, hopefully you can understand what what are the steps. Step number one, try to understand. We have written an x n which was unstable. Then we have multiplied with r to the power minus n, which makes the system stable. Now we are doing the Fourier transform of this and check it for all the value of omega and try to plot it in the plane. And that is known as a Z plane representation. Of course, in the Z plane, we haven't shown this kind of a spectrum uh, in the z plane, it is not possible because this is. If you want to plot it like this, you need uh, the uh, 3D plot. Uh, sometimes we are we can plot it with a different color. That means uh, this x. That means uh, the poles can be can be uh, plotted as deep red, and the zeros can be plotted as green or blue. By which you can understand where the values are higher and where the values are lower that can can be done but conventionally uh, it, it mentioned in the uh, two, 2d plane with real and the imaginary number uh, i believe that you, you have understood uh, this uh, this uh, representation of the z plane there is a term i have already mentioned that region of convergence what is the region of convergence? Uh, if a region of convergence includes the unit circle, then we can say the sequence also have the Fourier transform. First of all, what is the region of convergence? So if I, if I told you that we got the solution, got the solution means uh, uh, if you have arbitrary input 
xn, you have multiplied with r to the power minus n for which values of which values of r, and that is the region. Which values of R this system will be stable or converge? You need to ask it. If that is from 0 0.5 to infinity, if that is so, how you can plot it in the Z plane? Very simple. I'm just drawing it. What is the value? This is, let's say 0 0.5. I'm putting a circle. Why I'm putting the circle? because I need to check for omega from zero to pi by two, pi, three pi by two, and eventually twice pi. No need to check it from pi to three pi by two and twice pi, because if you check it for zero to pi, it actually been repeated for a pi to twice pi. No need to do it again, but eventually we need that for some particular purpose. So we'll show that in, in future. Uh, feature slides. So if uh, this is this is the value, uh, this is 0 0.5, what is the solution plane for R? What is the solution plane? Is from more than 0 0.5, more than 0 0.5. And where is that extreme portion? It is up to infinity. So infinity can, can be shown. So that's why it is just right like this. And this is this is the ROC, ROC for uh, this solution plane. For this Z plane or the Z solution plane, this is the ROC, region of convergence. This is not the, this is not the region of convergence inside 0 0.5. From 0 to 0 0.5, this is not the region of convergence because that is not include the solution. If I ask you, for, for this kind of scenario, if the region of convergence is from 0 0.5 to infinity, uh, do you have the Fourier transform for this kind of solution? Uh, 48. 48, you are unmuted. Do you want to say something? Yes, 48. 48. Sir, yes, it was a mistake, sir. Sorry, sir. Okay, no problem. So you can you can also answer for the eight. Do you have the Fourier transform? If the ROC includes zero point five to infinity, do you have the Fourier transform for that sequence? Any of you? I think, yeah. Yes. I think yes, sir. Yes, you are right, because it also includes the unit circle, this red line, let's say, this is the unit circle. Since unit circle is also in the solution plane, we have the Fourier transform. Yes, that's very good. That's what I have written here. So if this happens, of course, we, we can say that we have the Fourier transform. However, Sometimes Fourier transform exists, but we don't have the uh, Z transform. So there are some exceptional cases up there. So we'll give those examples in the future slides. So whatever, uh, what is mentioned here, we may have the Fourier transform, but we don't have the Z transform. Okay, so this is exceptional case. Uh, in, in many cases, ROC is between two circles. It might happen. And then it is known as no, known, known as the an, annular region. So uh, like this. So sometimes it may happen that uh, the solution plane is uh, more than something and less than something. So then uh, the solution plane looks like the annular format. Uh, if I discuss more on this, uh, let me give one example where, let's say, this is a value where the solution plays more than this is the solution plane.
more than this. Okay, fine. And there is another solution plane. But the solution is less than that value. So less than that value means less than less than that and up to zero. So this is. Now, where is the common solution? You can, you can uh, certainly find the common solution plane as this one. This is the common solution plane. We got. I may mark it more red so that we can understand the annular format of that. And we'll give uh, some example on this. So this is called the annular format. Now, this is your solution plane. Not more than that, not less than that. So if you have two signals combining together for understanding, let's say x1n plus x2n. For these two signals, for these two signals, let's say for this one, the solution plane is more than uh, more than more than a value uh, like more than 0 0.5 and above 0 0.5 and above and for this let's say the solution is one and less than one up to zero then what is the combined solution the combined solution is from 0 0.5 to 1. That is the combined solution. Of course, it will be shown in the annular format. So we can start with some example. And typically, I start with the simple and most effective example. Uh, from my understanding is that, that with the delta function. So let xn is equals to our delta function. You need to understand it uh, from, uh, from the graphical representation as well. So if we go for uh, the z, z transform of this, this is a by definition. And as you can understand that this, we will get the value of the delta function only for n is equals to zero so we can find so there is no summation so the value is one at n equals to zero and z to the power minus zero and that is equals to one so we got this for all the value of z for all the value of z means what for all the value of r and for all the value of omega we got one so one is everywhere in the z-plane. So if you think of, this is the z-plane, you've got all the places you have one, one, one. So everywhere the solution is one. For all the value of what? R. For all the value of R and for all the value of omega. This is this is the uh, this is uh, this is what the z plane representation. So it is not like that. You are putting all the, all the places one. Rather, we are putting in this way. You need to find the, what is the ROC. I'm talking about the ROC. What is the ROC? Of course, there is no uh, no harm if we put x r comma omega. That means any value for any value are r of r because one is not a function of r anymore. So that, that shows that for any value of r, we can have the solution. And what is the solution? And solution is one. So basically it should be written like this. So the whole z plane, it actually the whole z plane, of course this is real and the, this is imaginary. The whole plane is the solution. 
and of course uh, this is this is true there is no pole there is no zero because in the fourier transform we can understand that the delta function if you do the fourier transform of this what is the result uh, from zero to pi let's say and from my zero to minus pi the amplitude is one this is the amplitude so that means all the frequency component, all the frequency component have the same amplitude and which is, which was one. And that also been reflected here, okay? For reflected that they have the same, same uh, amplitude. And what about the phase? Of course, you can also find the phase value uh, from, the, from the Z transform as well. We'll, we'll talk about the phase, uh, phase component of the Z transform in, in the uh, subsequent section how to find the phase component of that. Of course, you need to find the value of omega. So what is the value of omega here? What is the value of omega? Since one is not a function of omega, so that means for all the value of omega. For all the value of omega means omega from zero to pi. For all the value of omega, you have this one. And what is the phase? Definitely you can find phase uh, from the imaginary part and the real part, and you've got the phase is equals to uh, phase is equals to zero. So all over, all, all over the places, the phase is equals to zero for different value of the omega. So it reflects to the uh, reflects to the Fourier transform as well. And from the from the solution as well, we can also find that if we put the unit circle, of course unit circle is a, is in the solution plane. So that's why we have the Fourier transform, and we can do the Fourier transform of the delta function. We have shown it in in the uh, previous sections. Now come to the another very known signal that is uh, UN, that is step response. And uh, need to understand very clearly how we can find the ROC for uh, the uh, unit step function. This is a very important statement to all the students that if you perform only the mathematical part, Without the showing the ROC, you will get actually zero for the Z transform. So for the Z transform, if you just do the mathematical part and you say that, okay, this is the Z transform of a, of a uh, input signal, you will get basically zero. You need to also define ROC because in future you can find that if we want to go back to our original signal that is called inverse Z transform, you need both information, both XZ and ROC to go back to your original signal. So without ROC, you can't go back to the, your original signal. That's why when you are doing the 40, uh, Z transform, of course, you need to say about the, the mathematical expression as well as the ROC. Without ROC, it is actually nothing. Okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, with mathematical expression, we can we can write this because u n has the value from zero to infinity. No need to write from minus. So basically, it is from minus infinity to plus infinity, u n z to the power minus n. Where u n, of course, it is only possible for zero to infinity, and the value is one and z to the power minus n. And now try to try to look at this. If you, if you want to have the solution, then this part should be z to the power minus one should be what? If you need to have a summable function, what should be the value of z to the power minus one? z to the power minus one should be less than one. Of course, z to the power minus one should be less than one. Why I'm putting this uh, modulus value? As you can understand that we have this circle for any value of r, where r is equals to let's say one, it, it is also true for minus one, no problem. So r to the power, let's say r to the power n minus n or one divided by r to the power n, take any value, whether this is a positive or negative, it actually gives the same essence. Whether you are taking R positive two or negative two, 
it will it will make higher value or the lower value when you are multiplying with other uh, other value of xn so that's why positive or negative whatever the case no problem with that so modulus of g to the power minus n should be less than one for making this sequence for zero to infinity summable so from there we can write one divided by z so z z should be greater than one where it represent r should be greater than one r should be greater than one how we got this from this equation so this is this is your reminder from this equation that means your fourier transform value uh, sorry z transform value you need to find the roc so what is the roc for un what is the ROC? It is from more than one. You can write one to infinity. One to infinity. And how you can show it in the uh, in the Z plane? Let's say this is the unit circle. You need to show it like this one. And what is the solution plane? More than more than one is the solution. You can show it up to infinity. It's not possible. So this is the ROC representation roc representation of the signal un roc representation of the signal and here just uh, showing this calculation again so how we can perform this calculation so you you probably know it so i have shown it in the in the lecture note as well how to find the roc uh, i have already mentioned it and this is the roc is from the one to infinity and how you can show it in the z plane okay this could be the last example for today's class. Okay, so now what we are doing, we are multiplying with a to the power, a to the power n, where a can be a to the power n u n. If you can recall uh, from the Fourier transform, if a is less than one, then we can perform the Fourier transform. However, now for the z transform, for all value of A, for any value of A, we can perform the Z transform. That is the beauty of the Z transform. So now, according to the definition, we, uh, we have written that. And we have found that this is our uh, output for the Z transform in a, in a uh, series format. Now, and this is the result. Of course, from this, we, we can write it very uh, easily. Now we need to find the ROC as definitely you have already understood that how to find the ROC. This segment, sorry, this part should be summable. How this part would be summable? If this one, that means a z to the power minus n is less than one. If that is so, then it will be summable. So from that logic, we can write it and from there, we have found that if R is greater than A, if R is greater than A, and of course, you need to put the modulus, whether this is a minus or plus, it doesn't matter. You can put, you can take an example and you, you can find it, okay? Uh, let, me, let me give that example here. If A to the power N, U, N, if A is equals to two, then what will happen? Definitely, it will growing with the time. Similarly, if we have a is equals to minus two, then what will happen? What is the first value? a to the power minus two. To the power zero, that means one. Then to the power one is minus two. To the power two means four. To the power three means minus eight. And it will like this. So if you plot it, you will find that this is one then minus two, then four, four means it's a higher value, 
and then minus eight. So it will goes very high value. So ultimately that will fluctuate and it gives a unstable situation. That's for sure. So whether this is plus two or minus two, it doesn't matter. For both cases, R is greater than two is the solution. That's why we can say R is greater than two means here in that case, if that is a greater than A modulus, whether this is a plus or minus, it is the solution. And that could be the, that could be the, uh, the, uh, the uh, proper way how you can show the ROC of the system. So now what is the ROC of this? So it, this is a more, more, than, more than the value of A. Now, what is the value of A? It can be five, it can be minus five, it can be minus two, it can be minus 20, whatever you, you are thinking about. But in case of Fourier transform, if A is more than one, more than, more than one or even equal, yeah, more than one. In that case, you don't have the solution. Only for A less than one, you have the solution. Okay, so I believe that that is enough for today's class. Uh, thank you very much for your participation.